And we begin with breaking news this afternoon. Reports of a person shot just about an hour and a half ago. It happened around 1030 this morning near 10th and Martin Streets in Wilmington. And WECT Stacy Pino live at the scene right now. Stacy, what have you been able to find out? Well, Kim and Bob, we have learned that one person was shot. He was found laying right over here is what neighbors tell me. He was lying on the ground. They say yelling for help. We do know he was shot in the leg, but he does not have life threatening injuries, according to the, the sergeant that was out here. But I want to give you an idea of what was going on. These are several bullet holes that you see in this one car. You can see at least three right here. And then take a look at this car over here. This isn't the only one that was hit by bullets. This silver car just peppered right here with at least at least four or five. You can see one hit right here in this tire, causing it to go flat. We do know just that one person has injuries as of now, and then we heard at least one or two cars is what the sergeant is telling us was able to flee the scene. So police are still looking for them at the hour and still working to piece together what happened. We were able to talk to several different neighbors because it was a much more crowded scene out here just about 30 minutes ago. They just took that tape down and the neighbors say if her brother didn't get in the house when he did, he could have been somebody else that was shot as well. It's a lot of pow, pow, pow. I guess about 15 times or less or more. Mm -hmm. I thought it was firecrackers going on. And my brother had just came by to check on me and he got in the house in the nick of time or he would have gotten hit. So obviously still a lot of unanswered questions out here. We'll be working to bring you the latest details. Another reporter, AJ Ricketts, is out here as well. He's going to be working to bring you the latest details. So be sure to stay with WECT on air and all online all day long. Back to you. All right, Stacey. Whether you're going to be traveling in a car, a plane, whatever, today is the biggest travel day of the year. Every day people, though, miss their flights for various reasons. Carolina in the morning, Stacey Pino tells us how you can take the stress out of your check-in. Stacy, what are some tips uh, to make sure you catch that flight on time? Well, Kim, that's just one of them is to show up early and be patient. As you can see, I'm pulling up my suitcase here. I brought Big Red with me. We're coming to the Wilmington International Airport. I'm pulling my luggage. Just about 1,200 people are going to be doing today, and I'm joined now with Gary Taylor. He's the operations manager, and this is a big travel day for everybody, whether they're going in a car or in a plane. So what's the number one tip you would pass on to people that are going to be passing through today? Get here early and be patient. For if you're flying, you know, within the U.S., how early do you recommend they come here? You need to be at the airport at least an hour and a half before your flight. But say if somebody's having some kind of awesome holiday and they're going internationally, is it still an hour and a half or? Two hours minimum for international. Two hours. Okay, so let's say my flight's a little bit later. I'm an hour and a half early. We come to this kiosk. You know, is, does everyone usually check in from these touchscreen kiosks? Everybody does. This is the beginning of the check-in process. Start at the kiosk, go through the process. You get your boarding pass here. Uh, if you have baggage to check, you go from the kiosk to the ticket counter and check your bag. Gotcha. And with the size bag I have, obviously, it's going to be a little bit over what a carry-on. But we can show you guys kind of uh, if you're unsure of the size your luggage is, you can measure it up right here. You can see that mine definitely exceeds that 14-inch mark. So I know I'm going to have to pay extra to be able to check it. So the next thing you do is you would come up to the customer service representative right here. And you got to weigh your bag because if it's going to weigh over 50 pounds, which trust me, I have definitely had that before with all the stuff I pack. I'm an overpacker. You're going to have to pay another $25. But I did pretty good, only 23 pounds this time. I say I've definitely a major improvement. So this is just the beginning phase. You're just checking in. Stay with us here on Caroline in the Morning because we're going to take you through the next process of what you can do to make sure you can go right through those TSA lines. Back to you. And thanks. And many of you might be waking up still feeling the sting of the Carolina Panthers loss last night in Super Bowl 50. Yeah, they lost 24-10 to Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. A lot of people might be crying in their oatmeal this morning. We sent out our Stacey Pinot to kind of talk to some fans this morning out at various places around town. So Stacey, how are people dealing with the loss this morning? Well, I haven't seen any tears in the oatmeal, but I can tell you Darren is still wearing his Panthers gear and I, you better go to school full because he had not only Lucky Charms, he had French fries and chicken fingers. So he is going to school on a full belly and still wearing that Panthers pride. We're going to come back to the kitchen. We have Greg back here. Now, talk about, did you watch the game last night? What was your reaction to the game? I feel like it was it was a pretty good game. I feel like uh, Carolina, they, they made a few turnovers there and I think they really cost them. No turnovers, they might have 
played a little bit better game. But all in all, it was a pretty good game. And now that defense, though, I know that was a tough defense for that Denver Broncos. How do you think that, you know, it looked like it shook up Cam Newton a little bit? I think it did, too, because he wasn't able to really get uh, do what he wanted to do throughout the year. The group played pretty good, but um, like you say, that defense was really, really tough. Yeah. Denver had a really good defense. And, I mean, Cam Newton, he's 17-2 and two, wrapping up the season. We can't be too tough on him. But with every Super Bowl also comes the halftime show. So what did you think about Coldplay, Beyonce, Bruno Mars? What would you think? I think the halftime show was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, one of the best, I think. I think it was. I really enjoyed it. Now, Beyonce, I saw her almost fall. Did you see that? Yeah, I seen that. I seen that. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Same, but she's a pro. She, she recovered. She's Queen Bee. They call her that for a reason. But definitely some sad Panthers fans here. We're at Jimbo's off of South College Road. where They're going to tell them, hang in there. Keep pounding for next year, right? Yeah. Next year, next year. Go Panthers, go Panthers. All right. There we go. All right. Well, definitely keep pounding. Go Panthers here is the motto at Jimbo's. Back to you guys in the studio. And this morning, officials from UNCW, they're expected to head out to one of our local beaches today. They were contacted early this morning when a whale washed ashore. Yeah, we received that call early on. Our Carolina in the morning, Stacey Pinto, has been there this morning. We do want to warn you again, the story, some of you may find it upsetting. It's a sad situation out there as this whale has not come ashore this morning. We rejoined Stacey again at Curie Beach this morning. Stacey, what are the latest details you're finding now? Well, Bob and Kim, the UNCW officials just got out here and they were able to confirm that the baby whale that you see right there is a baby humpback whale. They say it's about one to two years old and he says that it does look like it has been sick for quite some time. It looks very skinny is what UNCW officials are saying. So they are planning to take him to a necropsy later today to get more details on what caused this baby whale to pass away. But we have uh, several onlookers out here. They've just kind of been amazed. They say they don't usually see uh, these kind of whales wash up. This is Ben Shaw. You surf a lot in this area. What was your reaction? Well, I've seen a couple of these things out swimming around um, lately more and more frequently. Hopefully this is the last one that I see actually wash up on shore. Definitely. And here's your daughter right here. What's your reaction to seeing, uh, you know, this kind of whale wash up on shore? It's very sad and it's just very, I'm just very sad to see a dead whale on the beach. Me too. I'm definitely an animal lover and a mammal lover. So again, we were notified this morning by somebody out walking this morning. That's how you, uh, officials in Curie Beach were also notified. So again, if you're ever walking out in the mornings and you see something like this, do contact police so they can notify the proper people to be able to handle this situation and remove a, a mammal like this safely. Back to you guys in the studio. You can see over here, this is my buddy Gay. He is 89 years old, and you can see at 5.30 in the morning, he is taking his heart health seriously and making sure that he is out and getting healthy this morning. So take a little page out of his book because he is doing it right. So according to the American Heart Association, they're saying about 80% of those heart-related diseases and events could be prevented. So one way is hopping on a treadmill for five days a week, about 30 minutes of about moderate exercise. So what that means is I'm walking about 1.8 miles an hour right now. They say kick that up about three miles an hour for about 30 minutes is something that you can do. It's moderate, so you don't have to go full throttle. But if you don't have maybe the five days a week that we're talking about to be able to get on these, you can come out maybe three days a week and do it for about 25 minutes at a little bit more vigorous exercise. So maybe that means hopping on a bike and you can be doing that for, I think they said about 10 miles an hour is what they want you to do when you get on these. I'm having a little trouble in the foot pedal getting that in here, but that's some good advice if you're coming out looking for some exercise. There's also maybe if you're into hiking, they say hiking up, you know, uphill or maybe hiking with a backpack, just getting some uh, your heart rate up for a good 25 minutes, three days a week is something that they recommend. And we also spoke to a doctor who says prevention is the key for all heart disease. Uh, such as just exercising every day, watching what you eat, watching your diet, uh, never smoking, never starting smoking, stopping smoking if you've already started. And if people can do all of those things, the likelihood that they will need catastrophic care from a heart specialist is dramatically decreased. So we're out here at the Wilmington Athletic Club working up a sweat, but you can see Gay back there. He's doing a lot harder work than I am. But I'm going to talk to you more about what you should and shouldn't eat coming up on Carolina in the Morning. Back to you guys in the studio. Oh. And with the day before Thanksgiving, many of you probably hitting the road today to see your family and your friends. But before you head out for the holiday, Carolina in the Morning, Stacey Penna telling us where you can find the lowest price at the pump. So Stacey, where can the people get the most bang for their buck? 
Well, Bob and Kim, as you heard throughout Wilmington, the prices are definitely low. And as many of you, I'm sure, are getting up early this morning, you're packing your cars, you're getting that extra maybe ingredient so you can chip in for that Thanksgiving meal. You're loading up your kids and you're hopping in, but there's something you want to do before you get in the car and fire it up. You want to pull up that WECT mobile app. This is going to have your pump patrol on it and it's going to list all the lowest gas prices we have in Wilmington. Just reading a few off them, the Murphy USA on Carolina Beach Road is where you're only going to pay $1.98. This is actually going to be the lowest gas prices any of you had paid since 2008. You're also going to get some good deals at the Shell and uh, the Exxon Shell and Go Gas on Carolina Beach Road as well. But you might want to wait to fill up if you're going to go south towards Brunswick County into Southport because you're going to have $1.95 at the Murphy Express as well as $1.96 at Go Gas on North House Street as well as $1.96 at the BP. But if you're heading up into Hampstead, you might want to fill up maybe in Southport or Wilmington because you're going to save at least 10 cents going up into Hampstead because they're about a $2.09 is their cheapest gas price they have. So. We have a lot on that pump patrol for you to be filling up to make sure you're saving the most because we know you have to not only travel this weekend, but you have Black Friday coming up. So a lot to do this weekend. So you can save where you can here by using this mobile app on your pump patrol. But stay with us on Carolina in the Morning because if you're traveling out of state, I'll tell you how you can save even more money. Back to you. On FoxWilmington.com. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us for Carolina in the Morning on Fox Wilmington. I'm Kim Ratcliffe. And I'm Bob Bonner. So do you think you have what it takes to become the next American Ninja Warrior? If you do, you can find out if you do. This is exciting stuff. A new course opening today at Defy Gravity in Carolina in the Mornings. Stacey Pinot joining us live right now. So Stacey, what kind of obstacles can you do in this course? Good morning, Kim and Bob. Well, there's a lot of different obstacles in here, and I'm actually joined by somebody who's a, a pretty much a pro at them. This is Solomon Harvey. You might recognize him. He was actually on American Ninja Warrior. So talk to me, you know, what's it like? What kind of training do you have to have to be able to participate in something like this? Well, without an obstacle course like this, in previous years I've had to come up with my own workouts and routines and develop muscles to simulate, you know, certain obstacles and pretty much climb and play on anything I can find and just kind of make it up as I go along. And we were saying too a little bit, it's a lot of grip, it's a lot of balance. I know a lot of people like to lift those weights, but we were actually saying it's better just using your body weight. So let's go ahead and give them a show what we've been practicing on. Definitely. definitely. Okay. So Solomon, don't don't judge me too much. He is gonna go on the monkey bars right now. And uh, I have a, a little other challenge for me. I'm gonna go over here to the wheelbarrow. So let's see how this goes. But guys, this is just to kind of show it doesn't take an expert. So Solomon obviously has much more experience than I do. But you know, I've been out here for an hour and I've, I've tried a lot of things. I've also fallen off a lot of things. But the wheelbarrow is by far my favorite. Last time I did it, I got pretty out of breath. That's probably going to happen again. But listen, this is for any age, any size, any person. You can come out. Kids, obviously, you're going to love this. And the great thing is all to, it's to pay. All it is is you get the regular Defy Gravity experience and you get to have this horse added to it. So it's definitely a lot of fun for any age. And the grand opening is today at 10 o'clock, so it's definitely something you're not going to want to miss. Uh, so head on out, 10 o'clock is that grand opening. You can uh, learn to swing and climb like a ninja. Back to you. All right, Stacy, good stuff. I like how you disappeared from the shot, you reappeared, and then you came back over through the course. That was excellent. Stacy Pino joining us live. She is on location. Stacy, what are the new obstacles that are going on that course this morning? Good morning, Kim and Bob. Well, right now I'm on top of the warp wall, and this is definitely a fun obstacle for you guys. We're going to kind of give you a live look. This is Solomon Harvey. He has actually been in American Ninja Warrior, and he's going to show you. This is 11 feet high. He just climbed up and waving. And we have another obstacle on this shot, this side to show you. Now, this is Josue Luna. He is going to be climbing this rock wall and doing a uh, pretty cool little ninja move. He's going to look a little bit like a spider monkey here, if you can see him. Swinging, here he goes. He is going to fly off this wall. Three, two, one. Check that out. Okay, so don't be intimidated from what you just saw. Okay, this is definitely a course that's for experts, like you see here with uh, <laughs> these two guys swinging around. But this is definitely also something for, you know, someone like you and me. I was doing some things earlier, and trust me, it might not be as difficult as you see. Um, and they actually said why they put this course in places. You guys were calling and asking for it. So, Hey, your wish is there. Your command is their, uh, their wish right here. So there is a lot going on today. The grand opening is at 10 o'clock. 
Uh, there's going to be a little ribbon cutting, and then this is open. All you have to do is just come in like you're going to go to the regular Defy Gravity, and this is just another hit for you guys to do. It's a lot of fun, and don't worry, you won't get used to it because they are going to change these course every two to three months just to keep you guys on your toes. So this is something you want to do starting today at 10 a.m. You could train like the next America Ninja Warrior. Back to you.